Welcome to Listen Library's Bookmark video, where we highlight interesting and exciting audiobooks. Today's bookmark audiobook is The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave is a gripping mystery about a woman who thinks she's found the love of her life until he disappears. There's a knock at the front door. And on the other side, someone is waiting to tell you the news that changes everything. On television, it's usually a police chaplain or a firefighter, maybe a uniformed officer from the armed forces. But when I open the door, when I learn that everything is about to change for me, the messenger isn't a cop or a federal investigator in starched pants. It's a 12-year-old girl in a soccer uniform, shin guards and all. Mrs. Michaels, she says. I hesitate before answering, the way I often do when someone asks me if that is who I am. I am, and I'm not. I haven't changed my name. I was Hannah Hall for the 38 years before I met Owen, and I didn't see a reason to become someone else after. But Owen and I have been married for a little over a year, and in that time I've learned not to correct people either way because what they really want to know is whether I'm Owen's wife. It's certainly what the twelve-year-old wants to know, which leads me to explain how I can be so certain that she is twelve, having spent most of my life seeing people in two broad categories, child and adult. This change is a result of the last year and a half, a result of my husband's daughter, Bailey, being the stunningly disinviting age of sixteen. It's a result of my mistake, Upon first meeting the guarded Bailey, of telling her that she looked younger than she was, it was the worst thing I could have done. Maybe it was the second worst. The worst thing was probably my attempt to make it better by cracking a joke about how I wished someone would age me down. Bailey has barely stomached me since, despite the fact that I now know better than to try to crack a joke of any kind with a sixteen-year-old. Or, really to try and talk too much at all. But back to my twelve-year-old friend standing in the doorway, shifting from dirty cleat to dirty cleat. Mr. Michaels wanted me to give you this, she says. Then she thrusts out her hand, a folded piece of yellow legal paper inside her palm. Hannah is written on the front in Owen's writing. I take the folded note, hold her eyes. I'm sorry, I say. I'm missing something. Are you a friend of Bailey's? Who's Bailey? I didn't expect the answer to be yes. There's an ocean between twelve and sixteen, but I can't piece this together. Why hasn't Owen just called me? Why is he involving this girl? My first guess would be that something has happened to Bailey and Owen couldn't break away, but Bailey is at home, avoiding me as she usually does, her blasting music today's selection, beautiful, the Carol King musical, pulsing all the way down the stairs, its own looping reminder that I'm not welcome in her room. I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. Where did you see him? He ran past me in the hall, she says. For a minute I think she means our hall, the space right behind us, but that doesn't make sense. We live in a floating home on the bay, a houseboat, as they are commonly called, except here in Sausalito, where there's a community of them, four hundred of them. Here they are floating homes, all glass and views. Our sidewalk is a dock. Our hallway is a living room. So you saw Mr. Michaels at school? That's what I just said. She gives me a look, like where else? Me and my friend Claire were on our way to practice, and he asked us to drop this off. I said I couldn't come until after practice, and he said fine. He gave us your address. She holds up a second piece of paper, like proof. He also gave us twenty bucks, she adds. The money she doesn't hold up. Maybe she thinks I'll take it back. His phone was broken or something, and he couldn't reach you. I don't know. He barely slowed down. So, he said his phone was broken? How else would I know? She says. Then her phone rings, or I think it's a phone, until she picks it off her waist and it looks more like a high-tech beeper. Are beepers back? 
Carol King show tunes, high-tech beepers, another reason Bailey probably doesn't have patience for me. There's a world of teen things I know absolutely nothing about. The girl taps away on her device, already putting Owen and her $20 mission behind her. I'm reluctant to let her go, still unsure about what is going on. If you're interested in picking up a copy of this book, there's a link in the description below. Also, if you enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe, like, and ring the notification bell so you're informed every time we put in a weekly video. Thank you for supporting the Listen Library.